Hey guys, today we get to talk about Cradle. So Cradle has spiked. As of this morning, there was actually a ton of copies around $180. Now it is around $290. And in January, it was only $161. The most recent spike has increased its price over $100 a card. Cradle is very good in ED8s, and it's very good in the Legacy Elf deck. Now, the Elf deck is kind of expensive. It's not really a Tier 1 deck, and what's happening right now is bad for the game. I don't know why MTG Finance feels like it is good for the game. I guess I do. I can understand that Craig has... he. May, he did an interview and he said that one of his main purposes was uh, he has a family to feed. And he has to make money from it. He treats it as a business. And that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, from a financial standpoint, he's probably made a ton of money. And he's definitely going to eat well tonight. I can tell you that much. With uh, Cradle, Sanctum, and City of Traders all spiking up in price. Now, Legacy... I'm going to go ahead and I will support using proxies of legacy, not counterfeits, proxies. Mainly because the format cannot survive otherwise. And I've been very anti proxy. I kind of come from the. I have my dual lands, I have my lines, I diamonds, but I don't have anyone to play with. Now, even if I had the real stuff, would I want to proxy out my deck to make people feel more likely, more. Um, more willing to play with me, yes, I will do that. And proxies can be as simple as printing a card on a computer and then posting it on a real magic card, or buying a pseudo lookalike card, or even buying a um, some type of counterfeit and then writing on it counterfeit. As long as you're not trading it, my perspective of it really has changed, and I feel like a lot of us um, are forced to change how we view a proxy. Um, yes, as long as, in my opinion, as long as you're not doing anything too illegal with it, and you're not trying to sell it, and you're not trying to make money, and you're not pico trade trading away, then for me, it's becoming more acceptable to use them because the other thing is you a player has to drop twelve hundred dollars on a playset of cradles for their tier 2 elf deck. MTG Finance is MTG Finance. It is the snake eating its own tail and eventually it'll run out of, you know, rent, eventually it will eat itself because um, people are upset, people are angry, and now we have someone to be angry against. His name is Craig. Uh, Craig is not the only individual doing this, but he is. He has decided to become the face of MTG Finance. And it's been a long time coming because I feel like a lot of people have done this with more money than Craig. And a lot of people have done it more greedy than Craig. But they haven't been as open as he is. And that's a unique point. Um, and that might be the straw that breaks the camel's back is now we have a person we can say is doing this and say he's doing this for money and that's okay in my opinion that's okay he's got a family to feed but now it personifies this whole mtg finance scenario and the end of it i believe will be very near um, either because of proxies and proxy like cards or mainly because people just don't play Legacy anymore and the format just dies. Which, at this point, as a avid person who loves Legacy cards, that's okay for me. If the format just dies, then that's fine. Because I don't want someone to spend, I don't want someone to feel like they have to spend $5,000 to compete or $2,000. I mean, man, <laughs> Habo Knuckle is. $1,500, even if you wanted just a playset of that, it would set you back $6,000 for four cardboard pieces. That to me is absurd. Um, it doesn't make any sense, and it's not a game I want to play anymore.